With the summer anime season finally being completed, most of y'all are probably wondering, damn, what anime can I watch now? Bleach and Link Click had some crazy cliffhangers, and don't worry, I got the goods. Ranging from, holy shit, Yuji's the main character of Jujutsu Kaisen again. After two years, Tokyo Revengers is still going? Bro, who is watching this? I don't even know who this woman is, but I want her. Wait, this is Rising of the Shields Hero Season 3? Goblin Slayer is back, shit's getting serious. Are you dead ass, bro? Another Sword Art Online clone? Why is he a bird? And what's going on here? <laughs> Off the rip, we got the 100 girlfriends who don't just love you. No, they really, 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 really love you. Listen, we all like anime. And what do most weeps have in common? They have no bitches. I mean, look at me. I make YouTube videos on anime. You think I get any play? Do a bitches reveal. I know you don't get no bitches, nigga. You don't get no bitches. You don't get no bitches. Play your mask, nigga. Hold on. You don't get no bitches. You don't get no bitches. Drive, All jokes aside though, this anime is pretty good. The first episode caught me completely off guard. I mean, just look at this confession scene. I felt like I was watching a movie. You are a worthless bitch ass nigga. You should kill yourself now. <laughs> Yeah, this dude got rejected a hundred times. You know, me personally, I would've went on my villain arc like Kiaru from Redo of Healer. I mean, for fuck's sake, bro turns into Ken Kaneki from being so bitchless. But after God from Wist tells him he's destined to find a hundred soulmates, man just turns into Duke Dennis. Got the shorties bending over for him in episode one. And shortly after, they grab it onto him. You know, I wish my high school life went like this, bro. Shield Hero is back after the abomination that was season two and the infamous turtle. What is that? Hell no. Most people drop Shield Hero after season 2, including me. But see, I'm a simple man. I see good looking women and I click. Granted, I do wish to see season 3 of Shield Hero regain the hype that season 1 had. The world is just so vast. The soundtrack be having me ascending to another plane of existence. Kevin Pankin, I love you, bro. And it has the waifu of the season, said Dina. Like, oh my god, like I need her. Like, I, I need her. Like, I need her. Like, I need her. Like, I need her. And although Shield Hero can be quite a refreshing experience of Isekai, with the world being so advanced, it's nothing compared to the grandness of free Rin beyond journey's end free Rin beyond journey's end is a fucking masterpiece as someone who's essentially caught up with the manga i can say i've cried reading this shit a lot traditionally in fantasy anime the audience gets to see the grand journey but this is a story of beyond the journey's end i'll see what i did there oh brother this guy stinks free Rin is an elf and elves live very long lives they're practically immortal at the start of the story she sets on a journey with hater him and Aizen. No, not that Aizen. And within 10 years, they complete their journey and become heroes. For us humans, 10 years is a lot of time. The world in 2013 is vastly different than 2023. Granted, GTA 6 still hasn't dropped, but that's besides the point. 10 years is nothing to free run. It's even stated that 10 years is just 0.01% of her life. That's practically just a week to her, maybe even less. But to us, 10 years can mean everything. That's a whole decade, dog. Technology can evolve. There could be a whole era of sports she'll never experience again or you can grow from a boy to a man yet freerin can't connect to a human's view on time so she sets off and we see this quick montage this is only a couple panels in the manga but in this montage 50 years goes by just illustrating as an elf freerin doesn't really take time into consideration but this all changes at himmel's death scene the man who was once the strongest in the world was reduced to just being a fragile weak man because although he might have been strong enough to slay demons no man is strong enough to beat time and initially Freerin isn't moved at the funeral, but it's only after that she realizes how short the time she spent with him was, she cries due to her regret of not getting to know him better. And that's what makes Freerin so good. It makes you appreciate life and to realize how although it's relatively short, it's still a wonderful experience. And that's only in episode one. And when Madhouse making a comeback with a history of making some of the most iconic anime ever, Freerin will not only be the anime of the season, but one of the anime we look back when this decade is over 
and be like, damn, that shit was a masterpiece. Spy Family is back and it's practically taking over the world. In just a span of a year, it went from being some niche manga people talked about on Twitter, I mean X, Elon, please don't hurt me, to an anime with two seasons and a movie. I just know that Tatsuyo Endo is bathing in money right now and when the movie hits the box office, Overworks and Wit Studio gonna be lighting it up for having the most successful collab project ever. I mean, that ass, my grandma know what Spy Family is, so does practically the rest of my family as well. And to be honest, even my kids, 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 kids won't know who Anya is. If you haven't given Spy Family a try yet, you're missing out. And watch out, since Anya will find you. never go wrong with some romance anime and this one focuses on the dynamic between the super popular girl and socially awkward shy guy who probably just sits down on discord all day oh fuck i just projected on myself again see i feel like this anime would be a lot more interesting if i hadn't seen an anime just like this that aired last year and was way better but this anime is peak horny the MC looks like practically every other cliche romance anime main character. He fiends overseeing panties, but when the girl actually wants to get the deed done, he folds. <laughs> But you know what? I'm still gonna watch it. Cause I enjoy shitty romance anime. Like Girlfriend Girlfriend. Yeah, it's fucking back. And even though this anime is a living dumpster fire, for me it's a tier right below Rent a Girlfriend. See, when it comes to shitty harem anime, I still enjoy it. You know why? When it comes to shit like this, it's like the goddamn crack epidemic in the 80s. Once you see one episode, you just keep on watching and watching until one day you realize, damn, I just wasted a decent amount of time of my life watching 2D anime girls. Scott Pilgrim, however, wasn't a waste of my time. And seeing it get an anime adaptation brings me tears of joy. See, when I first watched Scott Pilgrim, I was eight years old. And when you're young, the type of media you consume plays a huge part in your development. And this shit just resonated with me. I can probably sing the whole Brie Larson song by heart before she became one of the most controversial women on the planet. The animation looks beautiful, the original cast is back to do all the voices, and best believe I'ma be pushing the Scott Pilgrim agenda when the anime drops. And with the animation studio having done Devil Man Cry Baby, I know they won't disappoint. I'm just curious to see how they're gonna handle the whole Scott and Knives Age thing. This my nigga Scott might gotta do some time. Who doesn't like a good revenge anime? But this one is extremely edgy. At the beginning of time, God created humanity and witches. The witches were granted with power while the human humans remain powerless. The witches were made to guide the humans until one day the humans advanced to a point where they didn't need the witches anymore and just started killing all of them. Now here's Adonis, the main protagonist and his sensei Chloe. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> His sensei gets killed and now he goes berserk with the power to summon anything he wants but i guess he's american since he has an obsession with guns America, fuck yeah. too bad adonis can never be as cold as kagura bachi the shibuya arc has finally arrived and this is peak jujutsu kaisen every episode is a new fight mekamaru's drills his soul as he fights mahito yuji has a jojo stand battle against self from wish oh my fucking god gojo is a go what do you mean no more gojo did and it wouldn't be Jujutsu Kaisen if it didn't have a jumping. Don't play on my boy Nanami though. He too cold. And Toji about to pull up Madara. Shibuya has been nothing short of peak fiction. And if you're not tuned in, you're missing out. It's been over a decade since Sword Art Online first dropped. And I think we can all agree that this anime had a major impact on the anime industry as a whole. From the new generation of many, many isekais. And even the fact that there's multiple Kirito clones. But how about I introduce you to a fresh take on the video game isekai genre if she breathes she's a god Shangri La Frontier is the isekai where the SAO effect truly shines. I mean, just look at this one screenshot right here. Sonic Frontiers, Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8, Splatoon, and is that the new Pikmin with Dark Souls? Oh no, it's Elden Ring. What the fuck? Introducing Rakuro Hizutome, the main character of the series. He has long hair, likes to grind shitty single player games, and has a girl sipping for him all within the first five minutes of episode one. But most importantly, Link start. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Hijitome takes on the username Sunraku in the world of Shangri La Frontier, where he said, fuck the defense, I'm going all in on offense with a bird mask. As he starts grinding and is quite literally solo leveling, witness a new take on the lost art of the video game Isekai by watching Shangri La Frontier. Introducing Gorp's Husband, the anime. If you're one of the very few women who watch my content, then this guy will probably have you guys head over heels for him, especially since we won't be seeing Gojo for quite a while. This guy is so down bad that he fully soundboarded his room so he can just scream the pain away whenever he wants. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. This is Ron, a man who was once the number one detective prodigy in a world where detectives rule all, yet he was banned for not knowing how to take a chill pill. And this is Ishiki, an innocent kid that wants to be a detective. And what do you get when you team up a man who deserves to be in a mental asylum with an innocent kid who will take all the credit for him? You get the detective adventures of Rick and Morty. Oh, and uh, Ron has the power to control people. Do you like One Piece? OMG, I love One Piece. Is the One Piece real? Of course it is. Then go find it. Anything for you, my king. <laughs> fucking god it's so real imagine being at the very top and everyone is trying to bring you down that's the daily life of Terra Komori in the vexations of a shut-in vampire princess she is quite literally dodging her ops this is what happens when you put an introvert in power funny gags sad backstories assassin girl pretty boys and even furries and i almost forgot to mention she has a yuri loving maid <laughs> Undead Unluck is a fever dream. Watching this anime will make you feel like you're enduring an acid trip. Someone in Shonen Jump really had the genius idea of having two societal rejects fall in love. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Andy is a man who quite literally can't die due to his undead ability. And Fuko is mommy, I mean an 18 year old girl who's got Milo Murphy's Law and has the unluck ability. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Ranging from gang wars, bananas spawning in, and a 9-11 recreation. Don't ask why Andy has no clothes on and don't wonder about the age gap between the two. Just turn your brain off and enjoy the show. But how can I end this video without talking about Attack on Titan? After 10 years and constantly extending this final season, like you can't tell me this name ain't stupid. Attack on Titan, the final season, part three, part two, deluxe edition, director's cut. The final season started in 2020, by the way. But all jokes aside, best believe I'ma be there for that finale. And I just want to give a big thank you to Isayama. Even though you've might've done a character assassination to my boy, Aaron, I still can't deny the overall impact Attack on Titan has had. And what a better way to end this video than for all of us to witness the ending to this masterpiece november 4th please mappa give us the aoe i beg i beg if you made it to the end of the video consider subscribing and hitting the bell because only one percent of y'all are subscribed i've never consumed this much anime for a single video before so i hope you all enjoyed it also make sure to join the discord for more updates link is in the description and besides that i'm gonna catch you